Hello, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. So, good afternoon to one and all. Good afternoon. Yeah. I'm Mrs. Vaishali Kulkani. Welcome you all to the third session of day two of AICT sponsored two weeks online faculty development program on artificial intelligence and its applications in biomedical engineering. I welcome today's eminent speaker, Dr. Mosimi Munnut. And I take this opportunity to introduce our today's speaker, Dr. Mosumi Munotna. Ma'am has pursued her PhD in 2013 and MTech in 2007 in ENTs from Electronics and Telecommunication from College of Engineering, Pune. She is currently working as Associate Professor, Department of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering, Pune Institute of Computer Technology. Her areas of interest are machine learning, deep learning, Biomedical Image Processing. Ma'am has received various grants for research work to name a few. Smart Fruit Classification and Grading System, Research Projects Sanctioned by BCUD, SPPU of 1,50,000 and Development of an Automated System for Cytogenetic Analysis and Classification, Research Project Funded by Department of Science and Technology of amount of 6,72,000 Establishing Skill and Personality Development Program, Center for SCST Students, project sanctioned by AICT. So the amount was 12,79,235. She has received many awards like fellowship from Indian National Academy of Engineering for Research Work under Dr. Jain Mukhopadhyay, Department of Computer Science, IIT Kharagpur, and, and she was the rank holder award for standing first during the MTech. Ma'am has to her credit a number of patents and copyrights like system for calling and receiving landline phone calls over smart mobile through Wi-Fi and a wearable device and methods for de detecting faults and for determining damages to the user in 2018 and automated karyotyping system. So she's a member of various editorial board Ma'am has to her credit a number of international and national books like Research Methodology, A Practical and Scientific Approach in CRC Press, in its international book, Plagiarism Chapter 9, Research Methodology, A Practical and Scientific Approach in CRC Press, International Book Chapter, Network Analysis, Network Synthesis, and Filter Design for Nirali Prakashan. Ma'am has delivered more than 15 invited talks in many engineering colleges. To name a few again, few like the expert talk on artificial intelligence organized by AISSMS, IOIT Pune, KK Walk Institute of Engineering and Research Nasik, Deep Learning Techniques and many more. So we welcome you ma'am for the third session of this program. Thank you yeah, so much for that warm welcome ma'am. Thanks a lot. Yeah. May I now request ma'am to take over the session. Over to you ma'am. Thank you so much for this uh, warm welcome and uh, nice words. And um, I'm thankful to all the audience and I truly congratulate you for all the efforts that you're putting in. Um, I'll start sharing the screen and with that we will definitely begin. Okay. Yes. Is the screen visible, ma'am? Yes, ma'am, it's visible. Okay. Uh, so a very good afternoon to all the respected um, audience, all the learned uh, audience. Thank you so much for this opportunity to be here. Um, and uh, it indeed means a lot to share something very little and um, extremely um, IOTA contribution, which um, I have done. I wanted to share it with all of you highly learned and experienced ones with uh, the only objective of um, it being of help somewhere in your journey ahead. So my, uh, my talk will be more of uh, giving directions about um, research, pursuing research in biomedical engineering and uh, with a typical test case of um, chromosome analysis, which was my PhD topic then. So I will try and keep my talk um, a mixture of technical and non-technical, uh, you know, uh, terms. I would like to share some of my experiences 
um, with you so that they help you and you don't have to walk the difficult lane which I had to during my research. So um, I will share some of those experiences, some of do's and don'ts and then uh, something that I technically, how did I proceed and um, uh, how was, uh, I mean, what were the milestones that were set? So it's, it is a mixture of all because I did learn from the uh, respected organizers that the crowd is a mixed crowd. Many of you are already um, in this journey ahead and many of you are aspirant and many of you are already learned. So all those who, uh, who will find this as a peanut, I excuse uh, myself and ask for your forgiveness. If it is too, um, if it is like too low, you can, you can any, any time given, any, any time you can always tell it and we can always have a rolling ball ahead. So please feel free to stop me any given minute, any given time. Um, I would love this session to be very interactive. I know all of you must have had lovely lunch, I'm sure. And um, two o'clock is the session. I mean, uh, wherein I will still try to keep both of us engaged with the interactions that I'm looking to with your valuable support. So let's get started. A warm welcome once again. The, the talk will be towards research in biomedical engineering with a typical focus on uh, automated pattern recognition for chromosome analysis. And um, I will start directly, um, uh, though, I mean, the outline of my presentation will be like introduction and how did I define this problem and what are the steps that I did take and what are the contributions and then some of the future directions wherein uh, other aspirant researchers can take it up. So do the outline of this presentation. Uh, apparently it is very methodological right now. I keep on sharing all my experiences and um, every problem that I had faced so that you know it helps you in some or the other way. So um, the first part, introduction and motivation. How did I end up? Uh, finalizing this as a topic, the topic as automated pattern recognition for chromosome analysis. And what was brainstorming thinking that went on in finalizing this and what were the directional efforts that were taken? So uh, many a times when we are on verge of, you know, um, pursuing our PhD and finalizing it and then finalizing the topic is the most important thing. And throughout the research, since the day you conceive that thought of uh, PhD and research, there is one word which we all need to rigorously remember throughout and throughout is having a research component in the work. And you will have the research component only when you can identify a solvable problem. The reason I do stress on this word as a solvable problem is because problems are immense. There are, I mean, it's, it's like full of problems and challenges and there are so many open issues and then there are so many uh, thirst areas. There are still bubbling uh, areas. There are unidentified issues. But what matters the most is identifying a problem which you can solve with the resources that you have, with the support that you have, and you can still ensure contribution in that particular domain down the line, three years, four years. So I, um, my MTech was more of towards um, in, in VLSI uh, part, and I was fascinated by uh, floor planning and, you know, all the resources of VLSI. And um, that is what I literally did spend six to eight months working at I Square IT then. And then I realized that, no, I don't have that support and the resources which I would need for PhD. So even if it was of my interest, um, I had to switch on my topic because um, interest is one very important thing and um, I do appreciate we may have difference of opinion here, but as I say, uh, interest is one very important thing and practically um, getting to do it is another thing. So that's how I, I then moved on to biomedical imaging, which was suggested by my respected guide, Dr. Madhuri Zoshi. And then when it came to biomedical uh, imaging, it was again an open forum and I would like to take a couple of minutes to tell you that how did I finalize this topic and uh, you need to have a lot and lot and lot of open eye awareness and a conscious choice when you are 
finalizing the topic we cannot have our interest and our emotions ruling it up when we identify a solvable problem for our research so i did start with cancer and then a lot of work i did see how many papers are there and the frequency at which the papers were published and the emphish image area which was going on in cancer and then this world's greatest um, anderson cancer lab uh, which was led by uh, an india miss asha multani so i interacted with her and i did realize that no with the speed that work is already going on ultimately for me to have the research component being kindled and fueled and still ensure good publications good research contribution good solvable work uh, i found it very challenging with whatever research was going on and then i again did park that problem and then i went to automatic i mean it all involved no, moment it is medical you need to have lots of interactions with the doctors see the national status and the international status try to get in touch with them see if actually is it a solvable problem see if you can do it with your own resources with the skill set that you have because something that is technical when it comes to algorithms when it comes to knowledge base we can do everything in our capacity but then when it is the um, support system and in terms of infrastructure needed uh, we are but at a receiving end so later on then i did work on hairline fracture that was one one topic which i um, i really like the way they do it in orthopedics section of the um of these um hospitals i mean it did visit my visits involved going to sancheti ruby speaking to doctors there and then not everybody is entertaining when it specially comes to biomedical so one very important thing which we need to remember is we need to convince our dear respected doctors that we are nowhere no way no nowhere near trying to replace them but it is only to facilitate um their work and moment that confidence is established between you and doctor that whatever you are doing is just an assisting tool and uh, just to help the doctors you will see a shift in their approach towards you so uh, it took me a while to build that connection and then um, i did finalize a uh, hairline fracture and uh, while i met a couple of colleagues with doctors i did come to an um, realization that the res the the improvement that the doctors needed was in terms of the machinery the improvement they did not need in terms of image image given by a digital x ray was absolutely okay with all the biomarkers already provided now that is something which i could have worked as a researcher but manufacturing that machine was not my cup of tea so um, again i wanted to share with all of you like again i was on a setback there like no what am i going to do in manufacturing do i have that expertise do we have that hub in pune will i be able to go what am i going to contribute uh, image processing ai ml i can learn i can study methods what about manufacturing so again that was out of question so uh, i again cancelled out that problem and then somewhere i realized that okay uh, uh, i will give all credit to uh, dr khambate madam uh, from coming uh, dr khambate madam was very kind enough to um, see all the efforts that i was taking and this problem statement i duly acknowledge madam that madam had given me this problem statement wherein you go for cellular imaging and do a directional market research wherein you will you will visit the medical lab you see what is their process what is the challenge they face you confirm if there is a standard database to work practical database to work you discuss with doctors lab technicians you network with like minded technocrats you study the available solution and do look if there is still a possibility of doing something better and see what are the recent developments and you know uh, upcoming um, related events so it was uh, it was then back in 2008 when the greatest um, uh the lab was about to be uh, set up and that is how i got into this this problem wherein i then went on to cellular imaging and the problem that i decided was 
chromosome analysis. So this is something wherein I had all the infrastructure. I had a good rapport with the doctors. I was in touch with the genetic labs. I knew what they are doing manually. I knew what is the problem they are solving. I knew that the algorithms that we are using and the methods that are available still need research. I was damn sure that there are so many problems in the existing uh, solutions which are posed. And then, um, then I did finalize this topic of automated pattern recognition for chromosome analysis. And that's how I did come to this topic wherein what exactly I am trying to do is like given a metaphase image, the image that you see on the screen is something that is called as a metaphase image. And my job as a researcher was to develop this karyotype. So all the genetic disorders and the I mean, and when doing, when once this problem is, um, once you have identified a problem, I would also like to give some hints that always try to support it with some statistics. That is how you add value to your problem. So you should immediately have that CDC, the Central for Disease Control says that 80% um, rise in genetic cases are there of which 76% are from India and one karyotype takes at least six hours and then that is still not doable and there are very limited genetic labs and the cost that goes is this much and with this increase you need something which is very a software which will take care of it and which will help some pointers to the doctor so always whatever final you are finalizing regardless of the uh, problem statement made the engineer uh, biomedical uh, always try to support it with lots of statistics like cdc says this and then um, you have uh, uh, who reports which are coming up you have these health reports which are popping up you have the predictive analysis so always try and tell that how important is the problem that you are trying to solve and it needs further research so this is the human cell structure this is what i had at hand this is what the genetic labs work at and this on the right hand side is the karyotype which is nothing but a tabular array of the chromosomes and moment they look at genetic disease they need to see is there the pairing of all the chromosomes clearly done so there are cases of specially abled children wherein the count of chromosome match uh, does not match the structure and that is how they start tracing it. So uh, this is the problem statement that I worked on. And then at this problem statement, I was confident that yes, this is doable. And um, going back to the same slide, everything that I told in the pre uh, previous one, this, was, this helped me as a cross check that yes, I have medical tie-ups. I know the process. I know that there is a lot of database available with Dinanath Moge. Uh, sorry, Dinanath Mangeshkar uh, Hospital. I had a tie up with Mohi Madam there. I, I got connected with other researchers in this particular cellular analysis. So I knew that, okay, this everything is there. And now then that was the point where I knew, knew that I had to start. And the very next thing, moment I knew that this is the problem statement that I have to take. Very important step needs to come up. And the step is deciding the scope. So basically, my job starts at this particular point, which is nothing but a metaphase image. So the earlier part, because if at all I if at all I take you back to my problem statement, my problem statement is automated pattern recognition for chromosome analysis. So uh, all those who are in process of finalizing the uh, PhD statements for yourself, we need to strike a balance that we need to tell what we are doing, but we don't have to tell exactly what we are doing. Like uh, we have to keep a very good room for you know a changing a good flexibility a good tolerance in terms of methods if at all we see um, uh, the process is like blood sample is taken the culture is grown it is incubated later on there is cell division that takes place and ultimately it is metaphase so i had to decide the scope that none of these five blocks is of my interest because i am not an expert in it 
at all, my job will start from this image. So um, the preparation of stereotype is out of the scope of my research and my job will start directly from the um, directly from uh, um, uh, from the metaphase image. That is what I had to make clear. And then comes that why do we need automated karyotyping system? So uh, again, taking you back to the problem statement, uh, the problem statement is automated pattern recognition for chromosome analysis. Now I could have used the word uh, using artificial neural networks, using fuzzy, but then that will restrict my methodology. In PhD, I really don't know what is going to help me, which method will help me. So it is not always advisable to be, keep it very specific. Always try and keep it generic so that we can have all the parameters uh, to experiment, to compare. So when I say pattern recognition automated, I can still I can still justify that the system is automated because my system starts with metaphase image. I can always say that I'm only analyzing chromosomes. When I say chromosome analysis, it can be genetic. Um, uh, the genetic content can be dislocated. The uh, parts of chromosomes can be dislocated. Only the count of chromosome can be wrong. Some chromosomes can be broken. Some chromosomes may be more in number. There can be up syndrome, there can be down syndrome. There is so much involved, but in my title, I only kept chromosome analysis because even if I am able to do anything of it in next two to three uh, years, three to four years, my job is done and I suffice. Uh, and it suffices the title chosen. So uh, I have seen so many cases wherein keeping the title very specific, um, unfortunately, uh, brings some trouble. So uh, it is always advised that do not keep any specific uh, name of the method or what exactly are you going to do. Uh, it should not necessarily be highlighted. You can keep it generic and generalized and then that gives you a good room to keep on experimenting so um, that is how that was um, that is how I did finalize the topic so um, and when finalizing this something which matters is like okay there are so many limitations in the manual system you need a trained cytogenesist it is a laborious work it is lengthy then it is time consuming it, it will depend on the mood swings how we are you going to storage it store it it is expensive in terms of everything in terms of storing it in in terms of the um, uh, in terms of everything so there are advantages of you doing it uh, in an automated way so automated karyotyping will definitely give you a lot of advantages and then immediately the groundwork starts that okay is this the beginning was it ever done before or has it just started now that I have decided to do it, aren't already there some softwares which are taking care of it? So once you have identified this, the groundwork now starts that, okay, you can always go back and see when did it start. A, a very fundamental thumb rule that I had used back then, almost it is like 13 years back now, go to Google Scholar and see the number of citations on that particular work and you know how how old that work is and that will directly tell you how much is the saturation and moment you know the saturation that will directly tell you like uh, how much uh, how much can else be um, how much work can else be done so always have this um, that's the why that's the reason i said that always be very alert and like kind of conscious fine it is done in 1964 first method was done, then 1970 was done, banned features were not done. And yes, from 1980s, there are softwares, but all the softwares are having a problem where they cannot identify uh, touching and overlapping chromosomes. And that exactly was my uh, problem definition. So uh, uh, defining a problem, ensuring it is solvable, always remembering that it will have a research component till the end, the research component which will be well supported and solved by the infrastructure that I have right now. We are all enthusiastic in the beginning, but then as the time proceeds, we really uh, start to make it work. And always in the beginning of the journey, you should have a clear idea of all the milestones. And then good networking, good connection with the doctors. So given a biomedical uh, domain, 
these are the things that always we need to check up with the open eyes and then what exactly are the problems so always um, a literature survey should be um, the outcome should be two things what are the challenging challenges and how many of these challenges am i really going to be able to solve so uh, it is quite possible all, all the challenges that is okay absolutely okay no i mean in phd we really don't uh, look for uh, for that 100% innovation but we definitely do look for contributions we definitely do look for what actually are you trying to bring on table with your research so what are the challenges so the challenges are these many like when, whenever there are segmentation clusters of this kind my software does not understand now me only saying this much does not uh, tell how uh, how severe this problem is so as i told um, just just a second i'm sorry just a second yeah so as i told me only telling that um, the uh, um, the segmentation of chromosome clusters cannot be done using softwares it does not leave a impact always when we are trying to um, tell the motivation of our research we need to tell how crucial this problem is so now case number 1 i say these softwares are not able to um, segment the chromosome clusters case number 2 i say given a metaphase image around 80% of the chromosomes are already are always in um, clusters they are non rigid and no software can solve this 80% of the cases so the thing is the same in both the cases but i made my point using the second case so that's where i was i just wanted to tell that always try to support whatever is the motivation that you are giving um, by some statistics and it should be a well referred one it cannot be uh, just um, on the verbal terms like when moge ma'am used to tell me this madam immediately did give me a book that this is what this book says i will use that as a reference so it is always a well supported evidence and uh, i immediately do sh show the screenshots how cytogenic software karyotyping have failed so always need for further research in aks or motivation of your research these things need to be very very carefully taken into account and this will actually give you clarity of what is to be done so it did take me a while to reach at this point but at this point we had exact clarity that what is it i will be doing in my research and how is my research going to narrow down so then as i did say that then with rigorous literature survey i knew that database is a problem there is no standard database why is it so important to have a standard database i am a researcher i work only on two overlapping chromosomes i publish a paper saying i got 100% accuracy now someone else database is more complex than mine and doesn't get that accuracy but that researcher's work is more superior to me actually but lack of standard resource will not give me a benchmark of direct comparison so what were the observations and findings that database was not there there is a different method for isolated chromosome a uh, different method for clusters and different method for the chromosome is polarized the difference the method is different Image imaging, it is different. Sometimes the chromosome count is different. Sometimes there is so much of um, uh, classifiers. There are so many classifiers which are uh, experimented, but inherent limitations of the classifiers is not taken into account. So I'll come down to that point. So I knew that with literature survey, I realized that okay, these many problems are already there. and uh, there is one very important thing would, which i would like to tell you at this point is moment you complete this chapter as uh, i mean sorry moment you complete this part i always suggest 
um, that you should have a survey paper which is being published. Um, here I would like to again just take a break of a second and I would like to show the, sorry, sorry. Just a minute. Okay, anyways, I, I will come, it is open, I'll come down to that part. So uh, what I wanted to suggest here at this particular point is, when we are pursuing PhD, we need to have uh, uh, an eye on everything. Where am I going to publish? Which point will I have a patent? Where exactly will this work fit in? Which will be the journals? At what stages will I have the publication? Because always um, now it's a long journey. And though we are always blessed to have very good directional pointers from our, um, from our, uh, from our guide, our supervisors, our well-wishers, but it is ultimately your journey. Everybody can be with you, but you have to work it for yourself. So at this point, uh, one mistake that I had all done was um, uh, when I when I did such an exhaustive survey, I did not publish immediately a paper on it. I published it after my PhD. And I um, and in my thesis, I got best comments for survey. But then I realized that let us say months, eight months of rigorous survey and you publish a paper and benefit you. First, one chapter of your thesis is ready. Okay. And survey is the most crucial. Uh, ma'am, I, I did get a message. My net is not stable. Am I audible, ma'am? Hello? Yes, madam. You are audible. Okay, thank you so much, sir. I had a message that net is um, not stable. I'm sorry for the disturbance. It's okay, okay, no problem. You're absolutely okay. Thank you, sir. So uh, that mistake that I had done is I did not publish it. I just finished it and I moved on having the clarity. Now, I was trying to tell that if you have that paper published in a very good journal, Two, two ways it benefits you. First way is one, mm, one chapter, the most the last chapter of your uh, thesis is ready, okay? And second most important thing is that by the end of your research, you start getting citations. So um, that helps you in a long way. Your, your work, your directional pointers that are given, they already start getting that highlight and that notice and that citations, uh, it always helps you it motivates you and you know that work that you are doing is getting its credit. So it's a very good feeling in terms of publications as well. And um, that's the reason at this point, I mean, uh, ideally speaking, the survey will continue till you have your open defense because you have to keep on com comparing. But you can always keep on going and updating it first to begin with a small paper uh, in a good conference and then then an exhaustive paper with an, with 100 references in a very good journal. But uh, though it takes time, uh, but it is worth it. So this is something that I wanted to share because even, and then there is no harm, even if you disclose all the problems that you have identified, that you, we literally do not aim to solve all of them. So that doesn't make any, um, uh, any problem at such. So after all this, I had a clear cut idea of um, defining the problem. And the problem was like development of efficient techniques for automated karyotyping by processing a metaphase image. So um, all the respected audience, I would like to draw your attention to the blue text wherein I have striked the required diplomacy in identifying the, in finalizing the problem. So development of efficient techniques. Now I will decide when am I going to call them efficient. Even if my method is, I have given myself a good room. My method is able to do it fast, it is efficient. My method is able to do it with a lot of accuracy, it is efficient. My method is able to do it, let us say, uh, with um, for more number of overlaps, it is efficient. So I am completely, I am keeping the uh, complete sway at my end how will I define that it is efficient? I have given um, a room. I did not write my title as development of accurate techniques because then it becomes challenging. 
and even if i get 100% accuracy it is on the database that i have created so the parameters which i will be using i have kept them very broad and second thing i have very well um, i have very well mentioned that i will be processing a metaphase image so that restricts the scope of my work and automatically rest of the questions um, they are out of box and then what actually will be the objectives these objectives will be exactly same as what is done in the lab exactly so any time when we are pursuing um, a research in biomedical domain there is just one thing i want to completely remember throughout this seven years eight um, sorry seven months uh, eight months when you finalize the problem statement there is only one thing i want to remember what is it that technician is doing and what is it my software will do technician does this that means my software will have to do this technician has to do this my software has to do this so my always i need to remember that my job is i want to replace that technician replace in sense not replace uh, facilitate or assist that technician so if somebody has to assist me that particular a uh, software or system should behave like me if it has to behave like me that means my knowledge should be transferred in that particular uh, uh, that particular system so setting the objectives we should always start with a, a verb and what exactly will be done will be the objectives that we decide and then we need to come down to a clear diagram of what will your um, uh, your research be like so as i did say in problem definition i did say that we will look at what i did metaphase image i will be segmenting it after segmenting i will have these individual chromosomes i will extract the features of this the features are nothing but the band patterns on the chromosomes there are some black and white patterns which are always taken by the uh, cytogenesist and these patterns are something which are used in classification of that chromosome and then once this particular part is done when i extract the features i will go and uh, classify it based on the features so here i have a clear idea that these are the steps in my particular problem definition now if these are the steps that i have now i can always decide there there is some research which will start with um there is uh, it directly takes segmented chromosome in some cases we can work directly on features in some cases i can go methodological i can start with segmentation and i can do it so it all depends completely but having this clarity is something which matters before you decide the um, uh, the line of your um, um, research so um, and in biomedical one very important thing um which again i faced a lot of trouble and i always wished that i could have done it before registering is ensuring the database so getting um usually uh, getting the database um is a major work it needs lot of efforts lot of follow up so always we need to communicate with the researchers and ask them to share their database and there are cases when sometimes they will and sometimes they may not so these are some of the databases which were going to the previous site so there were some publicly databases i had to write many emails to them and there are people who are always ready to help so that is not at all a problem but even if when they give their database understanding the database understanding the text note understanding how they have created it which were the noisy ones what is the ground truth how i am going to compare so if this groundwork is ready with you during your uh, registration you can really speed it up during my phd i almost did spend a, spend one year literally one year doing all this this jugglery and then i realized that still uh, in genetic lab i saw that there are chromosome clusters with six overlaps and then i did see that um,
sorry i thought there was there was an important call i i'm sorry yeah Yeah, so this is what I did say. And then um, uh, the point that I was trying to make is we need to always have all the things parallelly being witnessed. First is publicly a database. Are there researchers who are ready to help? Private genetic data lab. What is missing between both of them? Can I simulate it? So as a researcher in biomedical do or domain, we need to have all the three uh, parameters ready. Why is it so important? Because when I want to compare my work, I will compare it with publicly available database. I will say that Dr. Wade's research paper got this much accuracy, I got this much, directly I have compared. Biolab, this much was the accuracy I have. So I have some benchmark to prove my work. Then I can always make up a point saying that I have most most important thing apart from uh, that system behaving like me, I need to remember our bigger goal in our research should be deploying the system practically in the genetic lab. So when I am deploying the system practically in the genetic lab, it needs to meet that genetic environment. So what did I do? This algorithm, I not only tested it on public database, but also on genetic database, uh, sorry, also on private genetic lab. So the system of karyotyping that I have developed, I have given it to Moghe Madam, and there people are, have used it. So it is well tuned with the practical uh, set as well and not with only publicly refined database. So even if there is microscopic noise, there is fading noise, there is uh, noise of dye, there is noise due to clutter, there is noise due to moving of the slides, there is noise due to dynamic range, practically everything is taken care of. And then I strike that diplomacy. I will show good results that publicly I have got when there was private genetic lab in real time environment results slightly faded. But I will use that trick of showcasing it that I have done it practically. And then I realized that why do I still need to go for simulated database? Because Mogi Madam had told me that you will have six, seven overlaps. But the case is rare. Now, if I want to again draw attention to, um, uh, to a very, um, uh, very good research work, I will show that I have taken into account everything which ideally and practically exists in the market. So that is the reason as a biomedical researcher, um, uh, I mean, it was after two, um, um, twice I had submitted paper to Springer and uh, the reason they wanted me to rework on my paper was for these two points. So a uh, database from private and simulated database. So uh, the, this is something which I realized at a very later stage, but it would have been good had I had that idea in the beginning that, okay, yes, standard, this is standard, this is private, and the difference between them is simulated. So I am all set to now go. That is, that is how. So this was something which was in, um, this was something which was already there with Moghe Madam, manually karyotaping from Dinanath Mangeshkar. This is the ground truth that they use. They literally write it with hand and pen. They see the band patterns. They cut each chromosome. So uh, around one week I went, I took the training that what is it that they are doing? Only then I realized that, okay, I can simulate such overlaps and then some of them from biolab. So these some of the times, because ultimately um, in, in the research, uh, although it is very important that you set up the infrastructure uh, and you work hard for the intra infrastructure, everything. But uh, ultimately, it is the work which gets counted. So it is the work which matters at the end and, um, and, nothing, and nothing else. So that is the reason uh, this clarity, having this clarity in the beginning uh, will help all of us in a long way. And then I started with the first point, which was uh, the segmentation. I knew that first thing that I do will have to do is segmentation. And now begins, how will you proceed uh, technically? Whenever proceeding technically, the first approach always is which are the traditional algorithms which can be used? What are the limitations of these algorithms? 
always whenever i pick up any method or any experimentation or any algorithm i need to always ask two questions to myself that is why am i taking this why is it suitable and what is it that i am going to address throughout the research these two questions should keep on keep on and keep on triggering our mind that okay i want to i want to segment there are traditionally so many approaches global thresholding region merging region split in mrf watershed segmentation why none of them are not going to work here then let me do this you will always see that there are already papers who have done better job but you need to strike a balance when should i follow the papers when should i experiment myself that is what you need to strike that balance always and throughout the research you should be able to show that okay if i use global thresholding these small chromosomes which are actually pieces are getting merged here i see that this is identified as one cluster so always work on database and um, because this is something which will be very important when you write a very good publication when you start with the publication the choice of the algorithm why did you select it why did it outperform if it did not outperform why did it not outperform and what is it that makes it suitable here this understanding is clear now image processing artificial intelligence ai machine learning world is overflowing exponentially with all the approaches but the choice and the justification at each stage should matter then i realized that okay here here we knew if we need to defend it that okay the boundary is not fixed so i want some approximation in the boundary so let me think of an algorithm which will give me approximation in the upper and the lower boundary of the chromosome area and that is the reason then i used rough set uh, a theory wherein there is upper approximation and lower so this was a good choice i could justify it and after getting rough set theory i realized that my job is to develop a automated system but if at all it is automated the granule size that is nothing but the window size how much window should i take depends on the density of the chromosome now this image will not be same in each genetic lab in some genetic lab it will be dense in some genetic lab it will be scarce even in the same genetic lab for some patients it may work like this some cases it may spare on it may work in this fashion so i realized that granular i even if i use rough set even if i use this i am getting good results so the results which were there earlier where the chromosome pieces were not getting identified they are identified but the limitation now is in terms of the granule size so then i had to go for something which will randomly take everything into account and that is where random walker algorithm came and then we justified that okay why is there a improved result now so even if it is very dense i get good results even if it is scarce i could get good results even if there is a small translocation i got the complete result here so why my results have improved because random walker will take a random seed point dependent on the eccentricity of the intensity values so that is rare but when i am achieving so much is there a limitation between rand because of random walker yes and the limitation is overlapping chromosome again so this then this touching and overlapping chromosome clusters they did start coming into picture and then i realized that there is some other algorithm which will be needed so the point that i would uh, i wanted to make here is um, we should not directly um, um, i suggest uh, that directly we cannot keep on doing what has been done um, this this exercise of experimenting right from a zero takes few weeks but it gives you a very good clarity now when you read other research papers you have something to compare like there is already a research paper which has used snake algorithm i can compare that the snake algorithm will not work as it is because of the
tech activity because i have i know that uh, the thresholding approach has failed because of the concativity so this idea when we would when we want this clarity it is always advisable to spend few weeks it doesn't take long everything is open cv and everything is readily available all course you have data you have so many things so you know that okay this is doable but as long as it's not done um, uh, by yourself you don't have that clarity and this is this is something which did help me in my research so i wanted to share it with all of you and then uh, we realized that we will have to go for the snake's algorithm which finally uh, gave me a very good uh, result so um one very important thing which i again wanted to share here is i didn't realize in the beginning that segmentation feature classification very typical blocks um uh, it is like uh, so many um, um so many research problems always follow the typical block so i knew that this is how my flow will be but there was always a chance of doing joint operations and one most important thing that we need to remember as researchers is it may not be possible to show contribution in each and every step of your research there will be some steps where in your research you do are with the existing there will be some cases when maybe your results unfortunately are lesser than the reported ones and you need to find the reasons is it because of the um, highly varying data set or is it because of taking into account all the practical considerations or is it because you have taken into account the parameters which are missed by the other researchers in the way of proving the superiority of their results so it is okay not to have contribution in every step but overall as a phd problem contributions and findings are necessary so and how do you put them that is what is matter so i could have put it like rst failed but instead i will choose to put it as explore the usefulness of rst instead of me saying that rst did not work because of granular size i will say that explored i explored rst rough set theory upper approximation lower approximation was uh, exploited and granular size if i can automate using entropy the job will be done so i never leave any thread loose uh, that is what i need to remember in my uh, research so that was the second part and then coming to the most important part of because everything that i said right now was all elementary when the problem statement was finalized i knew that touching and overlapping chromosome is the major crunk and the um, major uh, key point of my research which will give me very good contributions so having known this i knew that this is the area now here i wanted to again tell something which is very interesting and which again i had to work a ha work a lot to get this but had i had that mindset of then back then of doing things parallelly it could have perhaps helped so the problem at hand was finding out uh, the i mean the problem at hand was to find if the chromosomes are touching or not and why was it important because if the chromosome is isolated my job is very easy to extract the features but but uh, but if the if that is not the case but if that is not the case then then my job will become very difficult so uh, the the thing of separating this i knew that the job that was to be done is given this as a, a chromosome cluster i have to find two points which are nearest to each other but they lie on different boundaries so um, when solving these problems we always don't have to think only technically given two objects which are stuck to each other how will i separate it i will separate it and i will find the point at which they are touching how will i do that i will find the points which are nearest to each other but but they are lying on different boundaries so that was a simple logic that i used to find the cut points and having the cut points then i knew that how will i find the overlapping one as i did say that chromosome has band patterns on it so if this is the overlapping chromosome the band is always perpendicular 
always perpendicular to the longer axis. So I know that for this particular blue chromosome, the band will be in this particular style. I know that for, the, for this red chromosome, the band will be perpendicular to this. Now this overlapped region that I have, how will I find it? Does it belong to chromosome A or chromosome B? So that will depend on the band pattern. So if I see the band pattern in this particular region, I will get to know it. So something which I would otherwise do logically, that is what we have to find out. And then how many, how many overlaps are there? So I go for simpler, um, uh, simpler um, thinning operations. I find the number of overlaps. I decide how many overlaps are there. And then I start thinking that how should I find these? Now here comes the most important point wherein the algorithm that I had used was I took chromosome one, all the points of chromosome one in one array. I took all the points of chromosome two in another array. And I started formulating the, um, um, the quadrilaterals and I found that the quadrilateral whose area is maximum the vertices of that particular quadrilateral will give me the uh, cut point. So this was something which was very raw. It was very raw idea. But the point that I wanted to tell here, like we will see it in this particular stage as well. So this is the chromosome cluster that I had. These are all the points in the, in the, uh, um, in the center where the overlap is maximum. And if you see this particular line, these are the cut points where I will have to cut the chromosomes and then I will have to separate it. And this idea, it worked on all the chromosomes, like on single overlap, on two overlap, on the third overlap. And then I can only find what is the boundary and what is the slope to decide how should the cut point be. And the moment that is done, we can find out how much, how should I cut the uh, uh, chromosome and which is the overlapping part. Now here is something which was very important is when I want to go for very good publications, such heuristic, um, um, uh, I mean, approaches are not very well appreciated. So one thing which I had not done in the beginning, but then I did it later, is to model this mathematically. So I did understand that I have to frame the problem mathematically. I know that the quadrilateral whose area is maximum, those vertices will give me the cut points. I know that cut point will be at the maximum area. Moment I know the band pattern, I can find out where, where does that overlapping belong to. With this rudimentary experimentation, I had definitely, uh, uh, I had definitely come down to this particular conclusion. But when I tried to submit up, this paper got accepted in EMBS conferences, in POCH, uh, in I in all of them. But when I tried to um, uh, put it to a Springer journal, uh, I got a remark that this needs to be mathematically modeled. So uh, here, what I wanted to suggest is like. Whenever we are devising solutions, it is absolutely okay to think logically and think how uh, a cytogenesist in the lab will think for biomedical problem and what actually are they trying to do and how should I map it to a region of interest here. Mm. Uh, so that is all. Um, that is all that I have to do. But that is okay, definitely. But what is the most important uh, thing is modeling it mathematically. I cannot just depend on heuristic like I did it. Um, uh, like I just did it for the sake of experimenting it and it worked on, um, um, it worked on, you know, uh, all the images that I had and for all these hundred images, I did see that, um, 
the area is maximum. I'm making these points in my publications, uh, especially when I go for a very cited and a good uh, journal, uh, it is not very well appreciated or received. So uh, one thing which I realized at a very later stage, uh, which I wanted to share with all of you is, when you are devising a problem, may it be logical, parallelly we need to think of it mathematically. And that is why, uh, that is when I arrived at Delaunay triangulation, which is, which is the required uh, solution for it. And then I realized that if at all, uh, the triangle theory that I was looking for, I can directly go for this particular um, uh, triangle and I can have the Delaunay plot of all the uh, chromosomes being uh, plotted. And then this Delaunay triangulation is a well-established computational geometry problem. And the same thing that I had done back here in the earlier slides that I did show that doing, um, taking all the points in, on one chromosome in one array, other chromosome in another array and finding it out. So one single statement of constraint Delaunay triangulation did help me out. So it was at this point, my paper was very well received and appreciated. So um, uh, always we need to remember when we are devising the problems and devising the solution is like, we cannot just show it that it, it worked. It needs to be supported very well mathematically. How did you identify the number of um, overlaps? How did you see how many triangles will you take? How did you decide the threshold in this particular case? So this needs to be very well taken care of. And then finally, how did you um, go and find those cutoffs, cut points, like it is shown here, the vertices of the triangle in all the three. And this should be well supported by the genetic um, lab that you are working in collaboration with. So um, when uh, there was one statement that I had written in my paper, um, in my uh, indexed paper is that it was well su um, supported and um, appreciated by the genetic um, uh, labs. Though in acknowledgement, I had written birthright clinic and Mohi um, Madam's name, they wanted me to show a letter and if I cannot show that letter, they had told me to remove that line. So uh, the point is that they will look at everything you are doing very scrupulously. So that is the reason, even when it was about finding the straight lines, the simple the approach was very simple. All you go is just plot the profile density. So when the profile density is plotted, you know, if the vertical lines are in this particular way, you know that you will get white, black, white, black, white, black. So that is nothing but this particular belongs to this chromosome, which is there on the top. Had the lines been horizontal, we know that it belonged to such a chromosome. So the point is that it was all simple logic, but um, the papers that we aim to publish, which we need at the end, or the patent, or the copyrights that we all talk about, all these things, they need very good mathematical formulation, well-justified methods, and, um, you know, uh, making sense out of what it is used and still showcasing the contribution which is required. So um, at this point, one more thing which I wanted to share, which went in my favor is I kept on publishing it. I mean, uh, I got only for... Uh, concave and convex snake points, I published it in a conference that got accepted. Then I went only for those triangle wala theory that went to POCH conference, which is again a very reputed EMBS conference. Then when this mathematical work was done, it, it went to Springer Journal. So throughout the uh, research, I need to keep an open eye on everything. Is my research, um, research quotient in the research being kindled? Will there be some contribution at the end of four years? Am I having good publication? Is the research bringing in some contribution? Is there some novelty that I can always prove? Because novel word is like um, the essence and oxygen of your thesis. That is what is required. That what new you have done. And then when you're doing something new, it cannot be just for the sake of doing. I just can't tell that, okay, I use this. What matters is what did you achieve 
by using it and why did you at all feel that that will help i used rst because i thought this will help and it helped but with this limitation i experimented with maximum overlap triangle wala theory and it was proven with deloni and it worked so it, it it the novel term just cannot go for the sake of doing me only doing new things will not help in my research they should bring some contribution they should solve some problem they should show some research component they should keep that um, uh, uh, identifiable problem being solved wala uh, tag um, kindle so this these things is something which we need to keep on uh, showing and then there is one more diplomacy which i wanted to share with all of you at times uh when when publishing in very standard journals we need to also have that um you know a skill set of showing your results so if you see this table when the when there are four overlaps the accuracy of my particular um uh, uh, segmentation dropped down but what matters is i did show 100% i had option of merging all the sets set 1 set 2 set 3 set 4 and showing average of this accuracy but i did not do that why is this result superior most of the people have worked only on two chromosomes on a single overlap my accuracy is 100 there so in the discussion section i write most of the researchers have worked on single overlap where my accuracy beats them okay very few researchers have worked on three overlaps in this research i have taken three overlaps which has 80% of accuracies in the metaphase lab and nevertheless my algorithm is still giving me 78% accuracy so the point is how you show your results is one knack which we have to really uh, remember when writing papers not only biomedical research but any other research so it is a it is a tact that you use you show that Uh, how important is the problem that you are solving you support it statistically you show what is the importance you very respectfully acknowledge every everybody who has done good work very modestly you write that others have not taken this into um, account or paid less of attention to it you are very modest in saying that and then you say that uh, you have still done it and the results do less we will not say do le uh, i will not say that the results were less i will say they are still uh, encouraging and have been explored for the first time in the research to the best of my knowledge so always having this knack when you are because as i did say ultimately everything matters we doing work is most important if there is no work we just can't publish but even if we have done a good work we need to write it and present it very well to publish so um, that that is something which is uh, which is which really matters in this particular uh, point so um and after after all this is done um after you have done all these points um, what matters is you need to again revisit your system and see that what else is left out so the most important thing which uh, later on i realized after doing all this work is um, okay if the chromosome is no work is done okay i mean no uh, no major efforts are needed but if the chromosome is overlapping i have to use a different approach if the chromosome is highly curved i have to use a different approach if the chromosome is in a cluster i have to use a different approach now i did realize that the cytogenetic um, genetists understand it but system does not understand it how will system distinguish it between all of them and that is where mm, i try to identify automatically if the chromosome is overlapping or is it isolated or is it lying in clusters using the same deloni triangulation approach so um, uh, at times the solution that you have offered for one helps you to solve other problems which are not identified not so um, this this was the major contribution um, that that can be um, that was done from my part 
and uh, maybe um, before I proceed, uh, I would like to hear from the audience. Is it all okay? I did not take any break in between. Is it all okay? Before I come to the concluding part, some couple of points I wanted to share. Is it okay? Would you like me to take a break of two minutes? How would you like to go about it? Yes, sir, ma'am. Hello. 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 Hello, ma'am. Sir. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You are audible, ma'am. All okay. Fine. So maybe after five minutes, we will start again, sir. If audience wants break. Uh, it's okay. No problem, ma'am. Yes, we will wait for uh, two to three minutes, ma'am. Then we will start. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Yes, audience feel it. Yes. Okay. Okay, sir. All okay. Should we start? Uh, yes, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Uh, you can start now. Okay. Okay. So, how much time do I have, sir? Uh, no limit, ma'am. You can take your own time, ma'am. No problem. Yeah. Depends. So, um, coming to this uh, last point, so um, major contributions uh, they were in a separation of touching and overlapping. So, again, I would like to revisit the same point that throughout the research there can be some domain. Where you have very good point, very good contributions, there can be some things which you have done merely for experimentation, merely for validation, merely for re-examination, and it is absolutely okay. But overall, I need to always keep in mind my big picture and the title that I am looking for. That should be continuously justified. Every single experiment that I am doing, I need to always take a check and am I justifying the title that I'm working for and will I be able to put it as a research contribution? So these are some of the things that were done. And while saying this, I also wanted to tell you uh, very, uh, like I did say that some work can be very nominal, which is only for the sake of experimentation, which was this uh, feature extraction while apart. Wherein, again, as I did say that 
Um, how will I do it manually? Manually, how did uh, the uh, cytogenesis did it? They literally cut the chromosome image at this part and they join it. And that is exactly what I did using MATLAB and I got results. So um, though this is a very rudimentary approach even that uh, was accepted that time and you can propose it as a rudimentary approach so every single thing that you are trying to do you can always fit it in some big work of yours or you can always not necessarily publish each and everything of it but this single thing that you give it will give you uh, it will give you the idea so uh, this gave me an idea that if this is the chromosome and this is the longer axis that i have and if i plot the profile density and if i take a look at the smallest line it is nothing but the centromere and this centromere is the major part in extracting the feature so this was a very small finding which i could only come when, uh, come um, um, to it when i uh, literally implemented it so uh, that is the reason i feel that when i tried to plot the length of all the segments the smallest segment gave me the centromere and this centromere helped me in extracting the feature so um, there are no major contributions that I could do in extracting the features. This, this black line is the neck of the chromosome, which was the centromere, which I got in a very, um, very raw manner. And later on, after my PhD, I did even publish a paper on this as well. But um, it was not a major contribution. So sometimes you will get some very good contributions like I got it in segmentation and later on as we proceed even towards uh, last part. So uh, when I have not uh, major contributions, I still write it very diplomatically, like I have designed a simple and a very efficient algorithm for extraction of features. And I only did a careful study of ISC and ideograms, and I did see ISC and ideograms are nothing. And I did see that um, it is helping in finding out the centromere. So um, my job was to everything that I am doing in my research is done with a purpose. Sometimes it will fail. Sometimes it will not. Sometimes it will give me good results. Sometimes my results may be inferior. But how do I choose to write it and take it ahead is, the, is everything in the nutshell which uh, you have to remember. And then coming to the last point which is classification of chromosomes here i wanted to share that once you have come to a step where all the cytogenesis your if your system is able to meet what the genetic labs require after that you need to think bigger in a sense the point that i am trying to make is at this point, after doing all of these things, I, my system was well accepted by Mogi Madam. It was used by her uh, trainee people. But from research point of view, I wanted to think something better. So uh, when beginning and commencement of the research, I did tell you that ultimately your, um, your objective should be a cytogenesis being able to use your system. But towards the end, you will automatically develop that skill wherein you can also bring technology into account. And then again, classification, you start with merely geometrical features. I again called it as an unrefined model because that was just a beginning that I did. And then later on, I un understood that most of the papers who are using ANN, or all these classifiers, they suffer from a problem uh, and that problem is nothing but why don't they go for uh, the way human being will learn. And that is where I tried to combine genetic algorithm and RST. So the point that I'm trying to make here is RST was something that I had already used. Genetic algorithm was something which was not explored. I thought it will work because of the nature of chromosomes and the population size. So this combination I did try. This combination gave me a good result. Again, I would like to show the way I um, presented the results and how did the accuracies improve over ANN uh, classifier. Again, I would like to uh, tell here that it is the way you put your results to showcase your novelty and then 
I did arrive at the most important point, which had nothing to do with the genetic lab, wherein all the neural network classifiers, uh, they deal, they have a problem of catastrophic forgetting. Uh, we human beings, we don't have to learn repeatedly. Okay, even if the spelling of a need right now is N-E-D, you are still going to read it as need because we are trained to do it. Now these neural networks for each and every data set, it, has, it requires training and retraining. And then that is where somewhere where I, I thought of using pairing as an approach, wherein instead of classifying, why don't I pair the chromosome? They always exist in pair. So if the pair does not match, means the count does not match. If the count doesn't match, means there is up syndrome or down syndrome. So how will I pair it? How will I pair it using the nearest factor? Which nearest factor can I use? How will I consider the probability of, uh, of pairing it out? And then how did I get the results? How was my pairing correct? So this was one additional research that I did uh, do. And then after having very good results of poor uh, that Earlier in the literature, dot product was used to pair, Euclidean distance was used to pair, mutual information was used. And then I proposed a, near, um, a nearness uh, factor. And even this paper was selected in a conference. And this nearness factor overcome the limitation of all of them and gave me all the correct uh, results. So uh, this confusion matrix wherein all the classes of chromosome uh, how are they matched using this nearness factor? Um, and how did this approach give you good results? And then coming to the last point that I said of catastrophic forgetting. As I did tell that your ultimate aim should be able to deploy the system in the genetic lab. Now, if it has to be deployed in genetic lab, it really cannot always be a rule-based system. We, as, as human beings, the rules that we make are always based on our earlier knowledge. And that is where incremental learning was a very new concept uh, those days back, which I proposed in my research. And using incremental learning, I developed a, a new uh, classifier. So why was this incremental learning necessary in AKS? Again, as I did tell, because there is something new, I shouldn't end up using it. I should be able to justify that why incremental learning chromosome analysis? What good will it do? How will it help me to change the algorithm? How will it give me better results? This justification should lead uh, to my experimentation. And this was another major contribution of my research, wherein I went a step beyond what is done in genetic lab. And I did show that the way human beings, we change our threshold with experience. I know that uh, this and this today, my knowledge is at this point. Tomorrow I learn something new, I improve myself. So there is continuous changing in the updating and checking the threshold and I have to update myself. So if you see, I continuously kept on updating my knowledge base and that is where I proved that this system is practically deployable. And even this was a very good publication uh, later on to our credit. So uh, the point is that you need to go beyond uh, you can always start from where a cytogenesist will start but towards the end your final goal should be deploying the system and not only deploying it but going beyond uh, what exactly uh, is is being done so whatever is beyond um, the existing that if you can do only then it will um, it will make uh, make sense so um, that is, uh, that is what will be, uh, th that was the major contribution, the major uh, results. So class one, class two, class three, how with every new class, the accuracy kept on increasing. How did incrementally the subclass classification increased? And how was it the main, main uh, contribution that was done? And how many classes did I select? Why did I select it? So these, these were the main, um, main contributions that, that was done to avoid catastrophic forgetting and this stability plasticity dilemma. So 
overall when you are pursuing a research in biomedical um, this this line did help me as i did say and then I, at the end uh, what matters is overall in the development of aks what all good you do so towards the end we need to come up with a diagrammatic um, something of this kind and this is recently it is published as a copyright of my work um, just last month it got published so given a auto uh, given a metaphase image i will pre process it then this was the major building block wherein no system is able to differentiate between isolated curved touching and overlapping chromosome and when this is done the approach for all three is different followed by extracting the features and pairing and classification it so entire research at a glance and the biggest contribution was use of dt delony triangulation for detection of cut points for detection of overlaps for detection if there is a isolated curved or a touching overlap and for separating them so at the end if you are able to present something of this kind and if you have this picture in front of you it will always help you in the long run so uh, these as i did say that uh, when i write my uh, contributions again i write a development of semi supervised uh, expert system so i'm seeing it as semi supervised i use a joint approach i identify s shape l shape and t shape which is touching overlapping which was done using delony i design a simple and efficient algorithm and when doing that i write the statistic how much is the increase that i have i use delony to identify a, a to solve a problem which is not reported in the literature i take credit of it i take seven overlaps and i show how good my algorithm is and i write that it is ranging from 77 to 100 because for a single overlap i got 100 then separation of the touching algorithm was my uh, contribution intelligent classifier incremental based was my uh, plus uh, another thing and doing a univariate approach so all these things uh, i am able to write as major contributions i can write some as my minor contributions that the data set i will keep it publicly available for the research community um, use of icn ideograms so i can always classify it as major and uh, minor um, labs and then collection of these data set and also at the end uh, we should be able to summarize it and uh, show that this and this was existing these and these were the problems of this my research was able to solve these problems i have also solved these problems then i realized that this problem is not yet reported identified no attention is paid i could even solve this problem and this is the overall uh, overall work that i have so um, that basically brings me to the end like what next can be done uh, in this particular i just uh, i was told that there are many um, many aspirant also so we can always i have nowhere taken genetic materials into account translations like you must have heard this recent research wherein if the parents have some um, uh, you know they have some dominant characteristics which they want in their offspring we can translocate the genetic material and we can check it out i can also do it uh, for genetic material for some diseases like some of the hereditary some of the diseases are hereditary and i can check out with the probabilities of which mutation are likely to give which diseases and as of now there is no hardware system for it and catastrophic forgetting i only did it for two groups we can do it for all seven groups so these are some of the research open research and till date uh, there is no no work at such done on any any of them so um, that um, that is what i would um, like to conclude with and uh, some research opportunities i wanted to share which helped me in a long way i wanted to share with all of you i was lucky to get to know about them during my research and i wish uh, all of you do get the same like there is this fellowship from ine indian national academy of engineers and uh, it is announced by aict every year we can call we can apply for it there are fellows iit mentors 
and we and ine pays us 40000 i mean it was 13 years back every month they used to pay me 40000 i used to go to iit kharagpur and work under dr jayant mukhopadhyay and um, the best part is like once you get connected to them uh, they are your life saviors and my my guide the respected dr madhuri joshi ma'am Uh, was always kind to promote and you know support all these activities so always um, try to work for these fellowships get these fellowships get connected with iitians um, always apply for travel grants so for many papers uh, the one for uh, in uk i got it from dst uh, in kuala lumpur and in malaysia i again got another uh, fund Uh, from AICT and DST, and then there was this sponsored project also. So all these things did help me in a lot of way, which I also wanted to share with uh, all of you. And um, some of the publications explicitly um, of the research uh, that was done in all these times. So as you see, it's a mix. There are some very good papers, some conference papers, some good conferences. some average papers some paid paper uh, journals it is all okay but what matters is the overall picture needs to be uh, needs to be very good so uh, as i present this small um, very small experience of my a peanut experience again asking for your uh, your forgiveness if it was too elementary and too rudimentary uh, and i deeply acknowledge my um, all these people who have been great support uh, along with my family in doing uh, all this little extremely little that i could do and um, the opportunity that i could get to share with all of you so um, thank you so much all the respected patient and uh, learned audience your presence means a lot and this opportunity to share means a lot so thank you so much over to all of you all open for the questionnaires and any discussion and anywhere where you would want me to throw some light yes thank you ma'am thank you very much for your session very good session uh, there, there are few questions from the participants yes ma'am the questions are the very first question is can you suggest few research areas which are yes. emerging uh, in biomedical engineering yes so um as as the last slide ma'am uh, in chromosome analysis itself uh, seeing the translocations of genetic material uh, that is a emerging uh, area and uh, catastrophic forgetting is another emerging area now uh, the era is of video processing ma'am so fast mri scanning that has been that is done so if we can process that and uh, we can uh, save on the time that is um, and the, that is taken for mri uh, imaging that is one very fast uh, um, emerging area because lot of mri patients due to the equipment they have nausea and all those problem so that speed scanning is, is one problem and another emerging area is pipeline structure like we have in computer processing so uh, in biomedical if we can, i can merge the pipeline structure wherein uh, this online um, health information systems are emerging Uh, that is also a very good uh, research domain but now the trend moves on towards video more of yes uh, thank you the next question is uh, can uh, the telemedicine uh, will help uh, in uh, what you can say that in rural areas uh, so that the diagnosis is possible definitely definitely ma'am but we need to again have that um, i mean support is huge that is all or else now uh, telemedicines like if we um, see there is lot of fund which is given by uh, given to iit delhi sir uh, delhi madam only for reaching out uh, telemedicines uh, to rural areas and in um, under jayant mukhopadhyay there is a telemedicine lab specially developed only for pro prosthetic arms and all these things so uh, definitely it is a very good domain and with iot and all coming up in picture it is a very good area definitely it will reach but again the challenges are in terms of infrastructure and most important point is ma'am when it comes to health one very uh, important factor is when it comes to health and uh, medical we don't compromise on money we want accuracy we want face to face and you know a kind of um, 
a very a first hand experience so uh, as a elementary decision for our um, uh, rural people it will definitely be a boon but uh, going long way it will need a lot of research ma'am thank you uh, the next question is uh, the most uh, major challenge in biomedical research is mm -hmm. uh, the validation of research the reason yes. is uh, doctors need, we need the help of the engineers need the help of doctors Correct. and Fraternity should help in order to authenticate the results. Right. Uh, can you highlight on this? Yes, ma'am. There are two things, ma'am. Um, now, uh, there is something called as a doctor scorecard. It's a standard template available. So usually, when a research is done in biomedical, the doctor's uh, scorecard is a good sign, which is usually uh, used as an appendix even in your thesis or during publications. But uh, as I did say in the beginning, ma'am, somewhere it is um, quite obvious that there is a threat amongst doctors when they connect to us um, about our interest of replacing them. So uh, when we are able to um, connect to them by saying that we are trying to help you, uh, their approach and uh, their validation um, is relatively easy to get. But the other part also, uh, if I may present with my experience, as I did tell even during my talk, is um, the best soothing part was the system developed was used by Mogi ma'am, which in itself was a validation. And when I published this paper uh, to Springer, uh, they were not hard and fast on the doctor's card. Uh, because ma'am, the reviewers there, uh, they know that, come on, this is something which is existing. There is no bluffing in it. So the approach chosen itself validates along with the data set that, they, that we have done. So uh, at times it is, uh, it is to your individual level that, okay, the system was used for the training engineers um, by Moge Madam, that is soothing. And um, during publication, that did not help. And everybody was kind enough to give the scorecard. So um, this kind uh, helps when it comes to biomedical. As I did tell, we need to take uh, doctors in confidence that we are trying to help them and make their job easy and continuously tell them that, God forbid, tomorrow when I need a medical opinion, I will see a doctor and not a system, regardless of the developments in an health information system. So um, that's how we need to build that up. And then uh, you need to work for it right from the beginning. But the best part is, ma'am, it is not something which is absolutely inevitable or mandatory. The researchers, the reviewing committee, they're all considerate to the best of my experience, ma'am. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Uh, now we are at the end of session. Uh, good afternoon, one and all. On behalf of JSPM Sajarshi Shahu College of Engineering, Department of ENTC, I, Dr. Swati Vesikar, take this privilege to propose a vote of thanks for today's speaker, Dr. Mosmi Munur, who has uh, given very uh, informative talk on how to start with the research that meant not only that, how to go for the literature survey methodology which is to be adopted and uh, how to go further for the publication and uh, finally to results and uh, how it is to be published in your work. That way, uh, you have given uh, the information uh, related to your topic. Definitely, it will be useful to the, all the participants uh, who are attending this particular FDP. Uh, I also would like to say that the researchers will be enlightened with your knowledge and presence. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thanks a lot. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, I have written my email ID, my phone number, and any given point of time, I will any time like to be of any help, ma'am. The whole thing is that I should be of help to someone with something very little that I have been able to do. So thank you so much for your patient listening, ma'am. It was great. It was great. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Mosmi, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Thank okay. you, ma'am. Yes. With your permission, should I close? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Have a good day. A very good day to all the respected audience. Thanking everybody from bottom of my heart. Uh, Swati, ma'am, and uh, Shilpa, ma'am, all the organizing team, um, Kulkarni, ma'am, um, all the respected uh, department members, audience. A big thank you to everybody. 
please feel me re uh, feel free to reach me out for anything i'm always there to be of any help stay safe take very good care and many 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 best wishes and good luck have a good day have a good day ma'am yeah thanks uh participants are requested uh, to attend the tomorrow's uh, session it will start uh, sharp at 10 so you need to join the session uh, before uh, 10 uh, 10 minutes for the session there is a small change in the schedule like tomorrow the, there was a session of uh, dr sutawne sir in the morning but now it has interchanged and uh, dr bartake prashant bartake from college of engineering pune is going to conduct the first session okay with this uh, we can uh, stop here thank you very much all participants for your patient listening thanks uh, bulbule sir hello yes ma'am yes we can end the meeting now okay sure thank you